Thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. You know, we're going to turn our attention now to rain. Now, I understand that here in Central Texas, it feels like it doesn't rain at all, or we've been in drought so long, you almost forget what it's like. But when it rains here, it pours. We're in Flash Flood Alley, and today we're going to be talking about how to protect your property and your garden and your home when it does rain heavily. And I'm joined by Elizabeth McGreevy from Rock Solid Landscape Design, and it's a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, lots of good strategies that you have to help people deal with too much water, in particular of slowing the water down, getting it to percolate down into the ground, retaining it, and also diverting it. So uh, lots of really cool strategies. Let's talk about uh, just the slowing down piece of that and how important that is. You know, for many decades, we have been taught to engineer our water so that it leaves the site as fast as possible, a straight line to the curve, to the gutter. and. Um, if you, the more you do that, the more erosion happens because the velocity of your water increases. Right. But you also lose all that water that can go into your own property. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you start, like, winding the water back and forth, you know, you branch it, you divert it, you know, you look at out in the landscape what ranchers have been doing for years on these slopes, and they put these rock gabions or they put windrows, you know, everything to slow down the water. Because wherever that water ends up is going to hit it with, you know, great velocity and right. cause more erosion. Right. But more importantly is trying to keep that water on your site. Right. And, of course, the keeping the water on the site means it's percolating down into the ground, sustaining your plants, keeping your soil healthy. There are m many, many benefits to keeping it on the site. Let's take some of the, the different things that you just mentioned about, for, for example, you talked about diverting it or making it go in curves. What are some of the ways that people can do that simply at home? One thing to just do is to start slowing down the water is, you know, our biggest uh, problem is that we have downspouts coming down everywhere. Yeah, right. You know, mm -hmm. and at the bottom of downspouts, people put another piece of concrete. <laughs> right. You know, and that and doesn't. Just, just it, and it, it, wherever it does meet, it still creates. And so people, I see them extending further and further and out. I'm like, no, you put, like, you put river rocks. Mm -hmm. You know, do like a strip of river rocks. And if you have a, a confined space, it could just be a straight little strip, mm -hmm. or it could be a winding creek bed. Right. And I do that a lot, you know, it's like where you do like a dry creek bed and mm -hmm. you tape, you know, attach that to all the downspouts. Yeah. And I, I was amazed. I did the river rock and the downspout technique in my own property where I live right now. And it, it amazing how much of that water actually does permeate down in. And I've been able to use some um, real heavy feeding grasses in that area. Some exactly. Some large ornamental grasses to really soak up that water. Yeah, you have to use the, the types of plants that you use or plants that can handle standing water mm -hmm. that will aggressively use the water. But when we get in a drought, they can still handle being in a drought. Right. You know, like another thing that I did at my own house mm -hmm. was where the downspout was coming down was right where I wanted a walkway. Mm -hmm. So instead of just doing, you know, standard little concrete walkway is I put slabs of stone, you know, above the grade. Right. Horizontal, you know, I mean, perpendicular to the, the downspout. Mm -hmm. So as that downspout water, it hits that first stone, it gets dispersed, hits the next one, disperses. Right. And so, and around it, I just have fallen leaves, and then the leaves get, you know, moved around. And I, and I see that used a lot now, large cut pieces of limestone or maybe even natural stone uh, embedded in gravel so that it re that really does allow the water to percolate in. Yes. You also talk about, uh, there are a lot of techniques, for example, with driveways and walkways of not using mortar, for example, simple thing. Exactly. You know, it, it, driveways are... are normally like overly built, you know, and it's instead first you reduce the size of the driveway, you add ribbons, and right. you can do this to an existing driveway. If you get a diamond tipped, uh, you know, rotary saw, you can go in and cut out, mm -hmm. you know, or you cut across and you put gravel back in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only is it allowing the water to soak into your property, but as the water comes across that concrete, it drops into that right. trench right. and it soaks in. Mm -hmm. And it slows down the water so that less water is reaching the street. Right. You know, and you can do that also with walkways. You can just you can even take an existing walkway and just cut. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a new one, you can do the, the slabs. We can uh, form up little concrete uh, slabs. You can also use uh, what's called porous concrete. Mm. 
and it looks almost like volcano rock when it's right. finished and water will just shoot right straight through yeah. that. Now you talked about use of river rock and that's something that uh, you know everybody knows what that is and can find it very readily but you we were talking a little while ago and you, you mentioned that you, you use in your own garden right now um, kind of a crushed limestone material. Yes. And uh, tell us about the advantages <coughs> of that material. Yes, um, you, if you use like what's called um, it's, they're like the screenings that the highway uses mm -hmm. for uh, in, in the asphalt. Yeah. No, in the asphalt okay. mix. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like a quarter inch minus limestone. Okay. When you put that over two to three inches of road base, mm -hmm. it's so alkaline that plants don't really like to grow in that. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way to just keep out the weeds and right. all that where you want to have a patio area. But this quarter inch minus uh, limestone will compact into itself, but it's not like, you know how like the decomposed granite gravel becomes almost impervious? Right. Because it has so much clay in it. Mm -hmm. This stuff still stays permea permeable okay. and lets the water can, you know, go through. And it will, it has little tiny jagged edges that compact on itself to make mm -hmm. a nice firm walking surface. Right, right. If you only put about an inch of it, you mm -hmm. don't want to put more than an inch on top. Now, we've been talking about ways to get the, the water to slow down and sink down in. I want to spend a little bit more time on the diversion thing. Um, you, can, you can divert uh, uh, water, but you, you need a place to divert it to. And rain gardens are very popular. Swales are, I see them everywhere I turn now, it seems like in Austin. People are building in swales or using berms and things yes. like that. Now, now sweat, you know, Berms, of course, are a real inexpensive, easy way, mm -hmm. you know, if you have any soil, but you can also bring in some soil. Right. Uh, I, I would advise using, if you're doing any kind of berm building, using sometimes granite gravel in it or something yeah. like that, not not the loam, because then mm -hmm. that can Too start washing clay, away. Right. And, yeah. Yes. Um, but where you have swales, you know, if you need to just have a lawn area, you could just have the lawn, but really it's better to use it almost like a bioswale. Right. Where you plant vegetation, like sedges, muley grasses, mm -hmm. things like that along the ways if you want to do shrubs, like southern wax myrtle, yopons, and put like rock, little, like little miniature rock gabions as you mm -hmm. go along. You know, I did this uh, one landscape design where we did concrete curbs because the client wanted a little more Austin chic look, you know, mm -hmm. that's a little more highly designed, a little more geometric. So we did these low concrete curbs so as the water flows over that, it stops behind each one, goes to the next right. one, so it's terracing. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. And you can, you know, we talked about not mortaring the walkways, but the same goes for the, the stone walls, we, the retaining walls we use in those kind of graded situations. Exactly. You know, I, I like to, it, it depends upon the velocity of the rain. You know, if it's a low velocity, you can just stack flagstones, you know, and I do it without mortar. Mm -hmm. And so that the water that builds up behind can slowly percolate through. It, mm -hmm. You know, again, it depends upon the velocity. On the site where you use the concrete curves, you know, it's only like that kind of slope, but then mm -hmm. you get like this, the water's coming faster. So it's better to have an unmortared wall. You know, with higher velocity, you have to use larger blocks. Right. And you create weep holes all throughout there. Right. So that water is seeping through, and it's not logging up, you know, jamming up behind it. Right. So it doesn't act as a dam. It just, you know, and that's what, uh, again, back to what ranchers use, those rock gab ions. Those right. are not mortared. Water's, you know, right. and you know soil percolate slowly through. slowly builds up behind it and, and exactly. adds permeability, et cetera. Yes. Now, we haven't even mentioned collection of rainwater, which is an important strategy, but we only have a few seconds left of time. But that is something that people should be thinking of doing. Yes. You know, rain barrels, mm -hmm. everyone, you know, a lot of people do those 55 gallon, I think, right. rain barrels, but rainwater collection, you know, I lived in Dripping Springs. We had two 10,000 gallon tanks that was served right. all the water for everything. And rainwater, it, it, it retains that water in a uh, closed system so it doesn't evaporate. Right. Well, Elizabeth McGreevy, we really appreciate you being on here. Lots of, of very good tips for keeping people's homes and properties safe from our flash floods. Thanks so much for being part of the show. You're welcome. All right, coming up next, it's Stephanie.